Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and today we're going to have a look at how to use 2013 from WordPress. This is last year's default theme, and it's amazingly simple, yet really, really powerful. It's a theme no website should be without, or at least you should consider it if you're looking for a simplistic theme that works really well on both desktop as well as mobile. Let's have a look at what we're going to do today. We're not going to go through how to use WordPress here. This is just about the 2013 theme and to give you a little taster of how you can make it work on your website. We're going to have a look at how to change the header images, which are by default orange, to something that may suit your website a bit better. And we're also going to have a look at how to change the text and the tagline of your website. Next, we're going to have a look at widgets. Widgets are these little things that can display how many Twitter followers you have, what your recent posts were, and so forth, or tag cloud, all those kinds of things, and how you can make them appear in your sidebar, how to remove the sidebar, and how to make them appear on the bottom of your website in the footer. Then we're going to have a look at post formats. Post formats are the magic behind different types of formatting on a per post basis. And it's been implemented in WordPress for some time, but not all themes support all image formats, sorry, all post formats. But 2013 pretty much supports all of them. And we're going to see how to change that and how to make your posts appear completely different. We're going to have a little look at posting images and creating galleries. This is something that you can, of course, do in all themes, but we're going to have a look at the implications in 2013. And likewise, we're going to have a brief look at how to embed videos from, from YouTube on your blog, because that's the kind of thing that you know we do all the time, and it's less complicated than it appears. The tools we're going to use for this are, of course, WordPress 3.9, which is at the moment I'm recording this video in June 2014, is the current version of WordPress. I'm going to do all this on a Mac, so I'm going to be using Safari, but of course this is also going to work in Internet Explorer and Firefox and Google Chrome. And to show you how mobile-friendly 2013 is, I'm also going to show you the same website on an iPhone and an iPad simulator to give you a real-world example of what your website can look like to mobile users. Interested? Well, I certainly am. Let's get started. Let's first look at the 2013 theme and get a feel for what we're actually looking at here. This is an official 2013 WordPress.com demo site here, so this is hosted on WordPress.com, and it's 2013demo.wordpress.com. Up here on the top, you have the header. So all these orange circles with the black text and the tagline here, this is the standard setting that you get on WordPress if you head over to Settings General. This is where you set these two items. And this is what we're going to be dealing with first. How do you change the header image? Because you don't have to use these orange circles here, but you can if you like it. Following the header is the menu. If you hover over it, tabs change color, and of course, flyout menus open up with links to different parts of your blog or even links to somewhere else. On the right-hand side here, also in the menu bar, we have the search option integrated. This is really convenient because you don't have to have a search widget. Even if you don't have a sidebar, like in this demo, we don't have a sidebar, you can still search the blog. So just tap on it, type something, and hit return. Next up, of course, is the actual post area. And this is where they've done a bit of magic. So if you keep scrolling this demo site, you'll see that each post appears to have a different color. And they've done this with the magic of post types. So each of these different colors is a different post type. But apart from the background color, what's also changed here is the fact that the text is slightly differently formatted. On this here, you see status on a particular date, whereas on this one here, you have a massive quote sign, and you don't see the word status, and you'll have a category and some tags here. And this one's a chat format. So we'll go through all the different formats here. This is the gallery format. And if you click on any of these images, then you get to a, to a full view of that image. And this on the bottom here, finally, this is a standard post. Title up here, date, category, tags go up here, and text, of course. On the very bottom here, or not displayed in the demo, would be room for four widget blocks. So if you find widgets at the bottom of the website particularly attractive, you can use them with 2013. Be aware, though, that if you're using the endless scroll feature of the Jetpack plugin, you will never get to see the footer. It's just one thing to be aware of. If you don't use that, or if you don't use Jetpack at all, then that's no problem. You will, you will of course, see your widgets. But if you have an endless scrolling feature, those won't be there. 
Let's go through how we create those here. Here's my WordPress 3.9 dashboard. I can probably dismiss this message. And in preparation for this, I've already written a few posts, but they're all just standard posts. So I head over to all posts. This is what I've written. Hello world was already supplied, and then I've written four standard posts here. If I go to the front page, I'll see it looks completely different, but that's because right now I haven't actually activated 2013 yet. So let's do that first. Just so that you know, I'm working with two tabs here, one for the back end at all times and one which is the front end of the website. So if I come down here under appearance and themes, 2013 is usually pre-installed. At least it is in version 3.7, 3.8, and 3.9 of WordPress, and probably for the next few versions to go. All you need to do is hit activate. If, however, for any reason 2013 is not supplied with your current installation of WordPress, all you need to do is come over here to add new and search the repository for 2013. And it's the first one that comes up. In my case, it says it's already installed. But of course, in your case, you would just hit a button similar to something like this, install. We don't have to do that, so I'm going to go back to themes and simply activate what's already there. If we refresh the front page, we'll see the effect. Same header as we've seen in the demo. And all my posts right now, they all look the same because I've just written standard posts. On the bottom here, we have a little preview of what these four widgets would look like. So they're actually columns here, one, two, three, four. And we'll see how to set those. Let's start with the header image, as I said. Back here in the back end, under appearance, you have the header. If you click on that, you can get a preview of what your website is going to look like with that current header. And here under default images, you have three to choose from. You can either pick one of those, so maybe I'll pick this one, and hit Save Changes, go and refresh my website. Actually, that wasn't even necessary because I get a pretty good idea of what my website is going to look like with that image here. But if I wanted to see it for real, head over to the front page, hit Refresh, and then you'll see the effect of that. Three images, you may think, is not really a lot of choice here, but that's, of course, just sample images. You can even switch this to random, and then any of these three images may appear at any one time. Or if you don't really like orange, just upload your own image. WordPress gives you a little instruction here of how big that image needs to be. 1600 by 230 will mean the image gets used as is, but we don't have to do that. We can just go choose image, and I've got a few here. Not sure if they're so suitable. Maybe we'll, we'll try this one here. And just click upload and it will give me a choice of what part of that image is going to be cropped. So I get a good idea of what this is going to look like. I can already see that right now there's not a lot of useful stuff I can crop out of this seascape image here. Maybe this, we'll try that. Not bad, perhaps a little bit pixelated, but not really what I'm looking for. So let's see if I can come up with something bigger. Perhaps this. Hit upload. That's a bit larger. I'm not sure. Perhaps this will do for now. Now nah, it's a bit busy here. You get the idea. Pick your own image and upload one if you have one that's not currently available in your WordPress installation. If you already have some, just use the second option here and choose an image. It's very easy to head over to your library, to your media library, and pick anything you had previously uploaded. So in my case, I hadn't uploaded any images. These two I've literally just uploaded. But if there's one in here that you'd rather like to use without having to re-upload it, just pick one. This one's just the previous one we can just use, set as header, and we're back there. I'm going to leave this for the rest of the demo, just so that you get an idea. To change the title of your website, so this thing up here, we can do that with the standard WordPress settings. So this here up here is called the title, and this on the bottom here is called the tagline. And the little yellow box that doesn't go away, that isn't actually part of the website at all. That's just a bug in Safari. Well, we head over to the back end, uh, head over to settings, and go over to general. And in it, you'll see the site title and the tagline. So if we wanted to call that something else, this is where you type that in. And the tagline, same thing, this is how you change that. 
scroll to the bottom, save changes, and that is how that site title and tagline gets changed. The menu here below the header is populated by custom menu items. And the search box we don't have to worry about, that's just there if we want to or not, unless we suppress it with some CSS, but I think it's a really useful feature. But right now all we have is sample page, we have nothing else. Let's see how we can change that. Under appearance menus, we can set our own custom menu. Right now we have one that's just called menu number one, and it's got the home button and a sample page in here. If we want to add anything else into this, for example, maybe a category uncategorized, we just tick that and add it to the menu. And then it appears here in this list. Hit create or save in this case so that the menu gets activated. And let's refresh that page. And nothing's happened. That's you know one of those WordPress intricacies. They're trying to make it easy and then really sometimes it just doesn't work. This The reason for that is that under here, manage locations, we're gonna to have to select that. I'm not gonna get into how to use menus here in from a WordPress point of view, just how they look in 2013. But there's another video on my channel that will explain everything about custom menus. So if I refresh that now, I have the home button and the sample page and my category here, which is currently uncategorized. If I wanted more menus here, like we saw in the demo that fly out to the bottom, all I would do is add such a menu item and then move it over so that it appears underneath one of those things. In this case, if I wanted to move the uncategorized category underneath my sample page, I'll just click on this and move it slightly to the right until it sort of clicks in here. Save it and refresh the page. And there it is. Uncategorized is seemingly gone, but if we hover over sample page, it comes back up. You can link to external sources as well. If you had another website, for example, you just head over to links, add the website URL and give it a title and add it to the menu. Notice that whenever you add something to the menu, it appears as the last option. If you wanted that in a different position, all you can do is just uh, move it up or down and indent it where appropriate. So if I'd move that underneath home and flush with home and hit save menu, then my new link would appear between home and sample page. So just like it was here. If I wanted to have this appear underneath home, you can just indent that, save the menu, refresh the page, and then it's seemingly gone, but if you hover over home, then there it is. This is how you build your menu. And of course, if you click on that, it will go to the website that you've linked to. Next up, let's have a look at how we can style posts. Here we have our four posts. They all look the same. Let me show you how you can bring those colors into the posts like we saw in the demo. If you head over to posts, all posts, let's just add a new post. I'll paste some text in here just to illustrate that. If we were to hit publish as it is, we would end up with another standard post. And you probably notice what I'm getting at here under the format box. The post format is set by selecting any of these. This is everything WordPress supports. Not only does WordPress support that, but 2013 is also kind enough to give you a preview right inside this window of what the post is gonna look like. Notice that this font here matches exactly the font that we see on the front page right here. Same as with the background color. The background color for a standard post is white, and even in the editor, we can see it's white. Notice what happens when I wanna make this in a side, for example. The background color changes. Same as with audio, and a little image gets embedded here, and chat, and so forth. So this gives you a pretty good idea of what your post is gonna look like. Font size isn't gonna change, but that's what the preview button is for. Different post formats have different attributes in regards to formatting. So if we were to publish our post number five as it is, as a standard post, it will just appear like all the other posts on the front page. If we, however, go back to the same post and change it to an aside and hit update, refresh the front page, then we'll see that out of a sudden our post title is gone and all we're left with is the text in a slightly different background color. So keep that in mind when you use different post formats. 
audio is the same thing. Our title now looks slightly smaller than it did before and we have that little audio button here. That's because this post format isn't really made for text posts. It's there so that you can embed an mp3 audio file or any other audio format that you can either host on your own website or host elsewhere on the web. Chat, same thing. Click that and refresh it and you'll see that the attributes of each post change depending on what you've chosen here. Notice that sometimes things look very different on your site than they do in the demo. If we go back over to the demo and have a look at a quote, you may think, well, why does my stuff not look that large and with a magic quote symbol here? That's because even though it's the quote format, we still need to format something as a quote. So select your text, hit these big block quote items here, and you'll even get a preview of what this is going to look like. And then if you want to tell people who said that, you just type that on the bottom. Update, hit refresh, and there, proper quote. There's one post format that works a little bit different than all the others, and that's the link post format. Let's try this out. We'll add a new post and we'll call it, this is a great link. Whatever you type in here, will just appear as text. So we'll select link here from the bottom, say publish and have a look at it. There, this is a great link and this is the description text. Notice that this is actually the post title and this is the description. Right now we don't have a link, yet if we hover over this we would, I suppose, get somewhere. So let's see what happens, where would that get us? It would just get us to that actual post. That's not really what we want. If we want to share a link with somebody, then we want to share it to another site. So in my case, let me link to that 2013 demo site. Let me copy that link, get back to editing my post here, and I will say this, I'd like to be the link text. Like so. I'd like for this to be the link. So I'll highlight this text, I'll hover over that uh, little chain symbol here and just paste my link in. Add the link and notice we get the preview, slightly off-white background here and the color of that link. Hit update and refresh that front page. So now we have a link in our link post type, post format rather, and we also have a link to the actual post title. Both of these will now go to that link. So this no longer goes to the single post, this now goes to the 2013 demo site, exactly what we want. Likewise, when we go back, this link also goes there to the 2013 demo site. Keep this in mind if you're using the link post format. Let's talk about widgets. Widgets are currently in our blog at the very bottom here. But we don't have a sidebar, and you may want a sidebar. And I'll show you how to do that. Under Appearance Widgets, you can see that you've got two areas. So you've got the main widget area, and you've got a secondary widget area. WordPress is kind enough that it tells you where these widgets would appear. So the main widget area appears in the footer section of the site, and the secondary widget area appears on posts and pages in the sidebar. So if I were to move my recent posts over to the secondary widget area and my archives perhaps as well, there's nothing to save, it just, it just does it. If I refresh the front page, I will see that the archives and recent posts are now in the front page and they've been removed from the bottom part here. So if you want to have a completely empty sidebar and not have any widgets in the sidebar and not display the sidebar at all, all you need to do is remove the widgets from it and then that's going to disappear. So let's do that. You can either slide them over to another sidebar or to another widget area, shall I say, or you can just open this little triangle and delete them. Again, nothing to save. There, that's it. As I mentioned before, all these widgets in the main widget area, so at the, in the footer of your blog, if you were to use the infinite scroll option from Jetpack or from other plugins, then you would just keep scrolling and new posts would be loaded in automatically at the bottom here, and the bottom of the website would never be reached. So therefore, in that case, you would never see 
any of those widgets. Just something to be aware of. Maybe I don't quite like my, my quote here, so I'm going to trash that. Yeah, much better. Let's have a look at how we can embed images. I'm making a new post here. And if I were to just publish this as a standard post, as you would have guessed, nothing much happens. It just says image gallery, some cool images, which are not really there. That's cool. Let's go back and in fact add some images in. You can either use the upload option or as of WordPress 3.9, you can just drag them in from your desktop. That's also possible. And I'll just upload all of them. And now you have a choice. You can either just insert all of them into the post, so everything that's just uploaded and appears in this list here would be inserted into the post as it is, or you can create a gallery. Let's see what happens if I do this. Insert all these, a bit higgledy-piggledy. See what that looks like on my front page. Well, pretty much like the previous just shown that to me. But it doesn't quite look like in the 2013 demo. So let's make that happen, shall we? One thing that they did, of course, was select the gallery image format. And if we do that and update and refresh our post here, then we'll see that the categories and tags from the top are gone. And all that remains is the post title and my text and my images. And now the date and the category and all these other options are displayed at the bottom of the post but they're not formatted in a way that it looked like in the demo. Well, for that, we'll go back and turn our images into a gallery. I believe for that to, to work properly, I need to remove them. They're not really removed from the WordPress media library, they're just removed from the post here. So if we go back to add media without having to re-upload anything, I can just go and create a gallery up here. And then I'll select the images I want. I can hold down the Shift key to select multiple. On the Mac, I can hold down the Command key to deselect certain images. Uh, on, the, on Windows, I believe it's the Control key. So now I'm left with six, that's all cool. And I can go and create my gallery. I can even caption my images if I like. I choose not to do that right now. And say Insert Gallery. There, is that cool or what? And there's one last thing I wanted to show you that's about embedding videos. Let's add a new post. And you can, if you like, format it as a video post. We're not gonna do that for now. And all we need to do is paste the URL to the actual YouTube video in here. Then hit publish, and that is the video embedded. You won't see a preview of it, because as soon as the page loads, WordPress is clever enough to pull in the relevant data, including the thumbnail from whatever's on YouTube. The width of the video is determined automatically by WordPress, thanks to something called OEmbed. I've recently written a small article on this, including a video on how to post Vimeo videos and all kinds of other media into WordPress, so check that out if you're interested. If you head back over to the post and head down and format this as a video, then all it'll do is get an orange background and add a slightly different formatting to the post title, like this. So we don't have the category up here anymore, we have them down here. And I suppose this sets itself off better for videos that have a white background. And if you keep adding posts and vary the post formatting from time to time, then you can end up with a very powerful, colorful website right on the front page. We've had a look at how your website looks on a desktop browser, but how about mobile browsers? Well, the, there's one easy thing you can do to kind of preview what the website does when it encounters narrower screens. And that is you can, if I scroll down here a little bit, well, actually, let, let me stay up here. You grab the side of your browser and just make it a bit smaller. You kind of shrink it. And then you can see what happens to all the text here. And the magic behind this are CSS media queries. These are things that tell the browser, if your width is this, then please apply that formatting, and so forth. So you notice that when it gets to a certain width here, your menu items at the top, they go away and they condense into a drop-down menu. So people on smaller screens, they won't get bogged down with this. And the reason for that is that the 
little search icon will still work. So an iPad or uh, any device in, in portrait mode with something of, I believe it's 768 pixels, will display a website just fine. And the text is just formatted a little bit differently. Notice how the headers are shrinking down a little bit. And again, this depends on if you have a really narrow device like an iPhone, it'll still look good, including the widgets at the bottom. And look, you didn't even have to do a thing, and you've got a mobile-friendly website. But this is just a cheap preview, so this is it's good to know that it works that way. But if we were to shift this to the side a little bit, I can bring in something even more precious, which is a proper iPad simulator here. It doesn't quite fit on my screen, so maybe I'll put it into, into landscape here. So I can see the effects directly on a Safari browser. There, how's that? This is a proper iPad, well, an iPad simulator. I've borrowed that from Xcode uh, 5.1. I hope it doesn't mind, but it behaves much like an iPad and it looks just like an iPad. And your website looks still fine. I can, of course, display this in portrait, so forgive me if I cut off the screen a little bit here. Yeah, but you get the picture. The website still looks palatable, as they say, and nice. And the search function, of course, still works just as you'd expect it, keyboard and all. Let's have a look at what this looks like on an iPhone. There we go, super tiny screen. And you can still see stuff. Okay, maybe the video is a little bit cut off here. See what happens when we play it. Will YouTube take care of the proper formatting? It will. There we go. That's really good to know. Including your image gallery, everything looks fine and, you know, usable. Can't be said for many websites that don't have a mobile theme or mobile theme support, shall we say. Let's see what this looks like in landscape. Even better. If you choose 2013, your website is going to be mobile friendly no matter what. Let's have a look at what we've learned today. We've looked at the amazing 2013 theme by Automatic's theme team and how to use it within WordPress. We've had a look at how to set the header image of your website and how to change the text at the top of the page as well as the tagline. We've also had a look at how to use widgets, what happens if there are widgets in the sidebar, and what happens if there are no widgets in the sidebar, i.e. no widgets equals no sidebar. And we've also discussed how important it is that at the bottom of the page, if you're using the infinite scroll feature, your bottom widgets will not show up. We've also had a look at how to vary the appearance of your posts on the front page using post formats. And we've also had a look at how to post images and create galleries in your WordPress posts. And then we've had a brief look at how to embed videos as well, because as much as it pains me to say, it is always a little bit daunting to do that. Yet again, it's very, very simple. I hope this was helpful, this little introduction to 2013. There's a lot more available specifically on my website and of course on the WordPress website too. Uh, I've written a couple of articles, one that discusses how you can change the fonts within 2013 and I've written another one that explains how you can display random header images at the top of your website. So I'm going to reference those two articles at the bottom of this article. If you like this, then please share this video with friends, family and total strangers. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.